Well, I had a job in engineering, and now I don't. You know, some people will tell you, go follow your dreams, go follow your passions. And some people will tell you, no, get a real job. Well, I've kind of experienced both of those things now. And I'll tell you what it's like and where I'm going from here. I spent four years at a major public university getting an electrical engineering degree. It was the hardest thing I had ever done up to that point. And it was a real wake up call because to be honest, I had kind of breezed through high school, uh, through parts of high school academically. So I didn't really learn how to study. And when I got to college, I got smacked around. I had my first real big test in one of my engineering classes and I got a 25 out of 100 on it. So that was a big wake up call. All that's to say, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into my engineering degree. I really enjoyed the process, even though lots of it was really, really tough. And I doubted myself all along the way. I had gone to engineering school really because electrical engineering makes a lot of money. But I learned to like it along the way. It was interesting. There was a lot that I really enjoyed about it, and so I was excited going into my career. And now, a little less than two years out from college, I'm not doing that anymore, and I have no desire to go back right now. When I graduated from college, I was really an exception to the rule in two major ways. One, I graduated without any student debt. I had lots of scholarships, and they got me through. And two, I actually came out the other side of college as a Christian. A lot of people go to college as a Christian, and they come out the other side, atheistic, agnostic, even another religion. But I was an exception to that rule. And so that really changed how I thought about a lot of things coming out of college. I really didn't have a desire anymore for the big money that a lot of engineers get later on in their careers. And even though I was somewhat materialistic still, it was starting to wane. I started to put my mind into other things rather than all the stuff that was just in front of me. And you know, I guess I also got married while I was in college, so that's an exception to the rule as well. All of these things made me grow up really fast. A lot of people will say, go and follow your passions, and you know, I, I didn't starting out. I was doing electrical engineering. There were parts of the position that I really learned to like. I was working for an engineering firm doing a lot of design for like really high-tech industrial scenarios, and certain parts of it I could really see myself doing for a long period of time, and other parts I really saw as obstacles to my career. And so I was willing to suffer through my job for a while because I knew it could be rewarding, especially if I learned to like it. And I think if I had stuck with it, I would have learned to like it. Lots of people do that. They'll spend 40 years in a career that they started out hating, and by the end of it, they like it. But a lot of people get stuck in a career they never liked in the first place, and now, now they really hate it. So I was kind of torn between those two things. And coming out of college as a Christian, well, I got into apologetics, which is defending the faith. That's the whole reason I started this YouTube channel. I was super interested in apologetics, and this stuff was blowing my mind. But I didn't have a bunch of people to talk to, so I decided there's a huge audience somewhere on YouTube. I could tap into that and talk to people about this stuff and spread the word about it. So here I am. But in the last few months, I've stopped YouTube. I was up to the point where I was doing two videos a week, lots of trivia throughout the week in the community portion of the YouTube channel, and then I just kind of stopped. I put out a big video and then stopped. But there's a very good reason for that, and it has to do with me leaving my engineering job. To make a long story short, I got introduced to a campus ministry called Ratio Christi, which does apologetics. And near me, the chapter had a full-time position open. So after a lot of thinking, a lot of prayer, a lot of talking to other people about it, months and months of consideration, I decided to join them. 
I went through the interview process and I got hired by them, but it's not a salaried position. It's not anything like I've done before. It's a supported missionary position, which means that all of the income that I will have, I have to raise myself. I took my whole engineering expertise up to that point and my potential career and threw it out the window. But I believe that I have been called to go and do this ministry. I'm excited for the future. And you know, I've told people that I'm going to follow my passion right now. And I don't really think that's actually true. You know, Mike Rowe got famous a few years ago for saying, don't follow your passions. And now the ending of that quote is, but bring your passions along with you. And I really think that's the way to go about doing things. I know people who have a job and they just treat it as their job and they don't like it. But I also know people who are really fulfilled by their job and it's something that I would never want to do. So I know that I'm made for a specific purpose, that I have the talents and desires and gifts that can all point in the same direction and give my life a lot more purpose than it had. And really the hard part was just, <laughs> I say this now, the hard part back then was making the decision to go and do what I'm doing now. The hard part now is doing what I'm doing now. It's certainly difficult. Um, my whole job right now is not to go and do campus ministry. That's what I want to do. But right now, I'm raising support. My whole thing is essentially being a salesman. I have a mentor from college who essentially helped me get my original engineering job. And I told him about this and he said, he said, don't quit your day job. <laughs> he said, you might find that you're not going to want to be a salesman. And lots of people figure out they really don't want to be a salesman because, oh my gosh, it's difficult. But I go back to what Mike Rowe said. There's lots of people who, they don't follow their passion, but they find a gap in the marketplace somewhere where there's so much opportunity, but no one wants to go and do that job. That's why there's septic tank companies that get really popular really quickly, because no one wants to go and empty septic tanks all day. Well, not that many people want to go and be a salesman either. You have to talk to people. You have to cold call people over the phone. And essentially, you're trying to sell them something, which, you know, in America's individualistic culture is easier said than done. Just about every night, I have to pick up my phone and make a bunch of phone calls and set up appointments and go talk to people. And it's not the most fun thing. It's not my passion. It's leading to my passion. But I'm also learning to actually like it a bit more. The first day, I remember looking at my phone, holding it in my hand for maybe 15 minutes, staring at the phone number that I had typed in, but not actually pressing the button, because I did not want to call anybody. The next day, it didn't really get all that much better. The next day, it didn't really get all that much better. Two months later, it was somewhat better. But it's really only been in the last two weeks or so that I can look at a phone number on my phone and just hit it and go. I've got a script that helps me with that. So it's a learning process, and I'm learning to like it a bit more as I go on. But again, it's not my passion. When we're talking about passions, there are a few Bible verses that come to mind. James chapter 1, verse 14. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil passions, he is lured away and enticed. 1 Peter 4.2 Consequently, he does not live out his remaining time on earth for human passions, but for the will of God. Ephesians 5.5 5. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. If you just take those Bible verses by themselves and not in the context that they're written in, you might think that having a passion in general is wrong. And that's not. Remember, in the first one that I quoted, it says anyone that follows their evil passions, not just any passions in general. So what do we do about those passions? Do we go and follow them? Well, it kind of depends on what they are. If they're good, then go follow them. If they're not, then don't. But here's a bit of encouragement. What's the most famous sermon in history? Probably the Sermon on the Mount. 
Here's a section from that that you need to know. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by any worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles strive after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I was in a very nice engineering job. It paid well, the company was great, and I loved working with those people. I could have stayed with that job and made a lot of money, and been pretty, pretty secure with my life. I could have gotten lots of things that I wanted, whether it's food or clothing or whatever else. But I decided to put it all aside for something that I felt was what God was calling me to do, what was part of his will and not mine. Like I said, it took me many months to get to that point, to make that decision, to actually leave my only source of income to go and do something that wasn't guaranteed to work. But I know that through the scripture, what God's will is for us, and just clearly it says here, God knows that we need those things. Now, the funny thing is, God doesn't need any of us. If tomorrow I'm struck dead, then God doesn't need me anymore, and that was the whole point. But while I'm here on earth, he can use me for his purposes, which is just wonderful. I'll have enough to do what God's will is, and then I'll go and be home with him someday. But if you realize that your life has a purpose, that your day-to-day -day life, that everything you do has a purpose, and all of those things are working towards the life that happens after death, then, oh my gosh, <laughs> the world has no more grasp on you. It has, you are freed from your chains. You're not a slave to the world. You, you can stare powerful things in the face and not blink. It's the true counterculture of the world that no one likes to, to really acknowledge. I hope that you can see through my life that Christ has made a big difference in it, so much so that I'm willing to leave something that everybody else would value immensely for his sake. I hope this is encouraging to you, and I hope you know that while I'm support raising, I will eventually be done with it, and I plan to come back to YouTube in a more um, relevant way <laughs> every week. I don't know if I'm going to do weekly stuff in the future. Maybe I'll, I'll do something once a month, but it'll be way higher production value or something. I don't know. And I just hope that anyone who watches this understands that, for one, they're not alone. Even if no one's around you, God is out there. Two, your life has a purpose. I'm an example of that. I was going down a very dark path before I actually turned to Christ, and now my life is able to go in a direction where I am so low stress, it's just ridiculous. Like, I don't worry about money. I don't worry about my possessions. I try and follow God, and I trust that he will provide for me enough. And three, I hope you realize that a life with Christ is not a life of following rules and having someone always breathing over your shoulder, making sure that you're doing the right thing. It's a life of joy. It's understanding that even though we do sin, even though we fall short of what God wants us to do, he's still faithful. He has so much more faith than we do. He is faithful to bring us grace and joy and peace. So I hope it won't be too long from now, but I'll see you next time.